Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a closer look at the elliptical orbit. Notice here we have an ellipse, two foci, the sun at one of the foci, and then here we have a planet going around the sun. Notice that sometimes the planet is much closer to the sun, this would be the minimum radius, and sometimes it's farther away from the sun, this is called the maximum radius. When it's closer to the sun, it's at the perihelion. When it's farthest away from the sun, it has, it's at the aphelion. We could also express the position of a planet as a position with a position vector r from the sun. And notice that the angle is measured from the perihelion to its present position. So we have an equation here where r, the distance to the planet, as a function of the angle is equal to a, which is the average distance or the semi-major axis, times 1 minus e squared. Now e is the eccentricity that tells you how elliptical the orbit is. That's kind of a way to say it. If it's perfectly circular, the eccentricity will be equal to zero. And if it's perfectly flat, where there's no distance in the vertical direction, it's a flat line in this direction, then the eccentricity will be 1. That would be quite an ellipse, wouldn't it? Of course, typically it's somewhere in between, and most orbits are very close to zero, with some exceptions such as Pluto, which has quite some eccentricity, and so that's a number much bigger than zero, but of course much smaller than 1. Now notice that the distance from the aphelion to the perihelion is equal to 2a, which is what we call the major axis. That's equal to 2a, which is the sum of the minimum radius and the maximum radius combined. If we now divide that by 2, and we have a, that's equal to the sum of the minimum radius and the maximum radius combined divided by 2, that's known as the semi-major axis, which also is the average distance between the planet and the sun. Now notice that the distance from the central point here where the two lines cross when you draw a line from top to bottom and from left to right where they cross you can see that the distance from there to there is considered b the distance from there to there is considered a a is the semi-major axis b is the semi-minor axis and the line drawn from where the sun is to this point right here that's also considered a which is the same distance as from here to there to the perihelion or from there to the aphelion. It's again half the semi-major axis as measured from there to there or as measured from there to there. Now, how do we calculate that eccentricity number? We can calculate the eccentricity as follows. We can say that the minimum radius, r min, which is the distance from the sun to the perihelion, is equal to the average distance times 1 minus the eccentricity and r max, the distance from the aphelion to the sun, is equal to the average distance times 1 plus e. Another way to calculate the eccentricity, of course, we can solve this equation for e, and uh, if you know the minimum radius and the maximum radius of the orbit of a planet, you can then easily use this equation to find e. You can also use Pythagorean theorem on this triangle right here, because here we have a times e is this distance from where those two lines meet to where the sun is. This is a times e. Again, if e is 0, then a times e would be 0, and the sun would be right at the middle and would have a circular orbit instead of an elliptical orbit. So we can use Pythagorean theorem by saying that b squared plus this squared, which is a e quantity squared, is equal to the hypotenuse squared, which is a squared. So let's solve this equation for e and see what we get. So we have b squared plus a squared e squared is equal to a squared. Moving the a to one side, let's see here, what we could do is, let's move this over to this side. So we have b squared is equal to a squared minus a squared times e squared. And then factoring out an a squared, we get b squared is equal to a squared times 1 minus e squared. Now we can divide both sides by a squared, so now we have b squared over a squared is equal to 1 minus e squared. And then move e squared to the left side and this to the right side. We can now say that e squared is equal to 1 minus b squared over a squared. And finally, e is equal to the square root of 1 minus b squared over a squared. 
So here's another way in which you can find the eccentricity of the orbit of a planet, or of a moon, or of an asteroid, whatever we're looking at. Okay, quickly here, what we could do is if, for example, if we know the minimum or maximum radius, we'll just take one of them, let's solve this one for E as well. And so what we can do is we can say that R min is equal to A times or minus AE. And then moving this over to the left side, we can say that AE is equal to A minus R min. And then if we divide both sides by A, we get E is equal to A minus R min divided by A. Or if you divide that in here, you can say that E is equal to, oh, there we go, 1 minus R min over A. And that's not a very good looking R. So let me do this again. There we go. Better. So we can express the eccentricity in terms of the minimum, or we can, of course, use the maximum radius, and we can express the eccentricity in terms of the relationship between B, A, and that cross angle right there. And that's how it's done.